Hello, 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 and welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the next edition of Puertas Abiertas right here on GKI Radio. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for all the calls and emails that you have sent us with your questions and with your stories. I assure you that they will be on a future and upcoming show. Um, I want to start today because we have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about today. We have many guests with us today. I want to talk about what is mostly happening right now in the market. As you know, it's a seller's market. It's extremely competitive. And I have gotten a few calls in reference to the contract that most people are using now um, to put on their offers, right? Again, I want to remind you to make sure that you have a competent, great uh, agent that is helping you, that knows your capabilities, that has your financial statements, and that understands what you're looking for and understands the market. I will say it again and a hundred times. I don't care the few stories that we may hear of maybe not agents not doing their job. There's a lot of great people out there. There's a lot of good realtors out there. You just need to do your due diligence and interview them just like you would interview anybody who's working for you, who's representing you and doing your best interest. I'm sure that you don't go to just any doctor to have an operation done. So interview, interview the people that you're with because there are great people out there. I want to talk a little bit today on the contract that is mostly being used right now, which is the as is contract. I want you to understand that when something says as is, you are buying what it is, where it is, and how it is. It does not mean that you do not have inspections uh, or appraisal. That's not what it means. It's just telling you ahead of time that the owner of the property is not keen or willing to do a fixing up. So if you find something doing inspections or an appraisal, that's something to be negotiated in the price, even though the owner may choose to fix it, it's telling you ahead of time, there's no expectation of fixing the property in order to sell it, okay? So as long as we're clear with that, then you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, a contract has very important points, and I know sometimes folks don't understand how important it is with dates. The only reason that a contract is enforceable is because you have dates to do what you are saying that you are going to do. There's almost like little, little deadlines right inside the contract, and they're very important because if somebody doesn't meet those deadlines, that is where you can find yourself in default of the contract or in some danger, and it's not where you want to be. You always want to be comfortable in the program and, and in the contract that you're in, and you want to be knowing what targets you need to hit and when. I know that we, I see that in the monitor, you guys can see the assist contract. I'm sure you have seen this if you're putting an offer or you have already placed an offer. Um, these are very easy to read contracts. Believe it or not, the language is very friendly to both sellers and buyers. You don't necessarily need to be a full attorney to understand the language. At least in Florida, the Florida bar uh, tries very hard to give us contracts that have a lot of explanations in them and that the language is really not that difficult. But if there's something in the contract that you don't understand, remember, if your agent cannot help you with it, most agents or most brokerage do have attorneys in-house. And if you don't, remember, when you are doing title, when you have put a contract, your contract has been accepted, there's always title attorneys. There's always someone in there that can give you a hand. But before you sign the contract, make sure that you have a clear understanding why you're signing, what is it that you need to do within that contract, and what are the dates that you need to do the work at, okay? So we're looking at the page one. Page one is kind of like self-explanatory. On the top is saying who are the parties involved in the contract. Normally or always the parties to the contract is the seller and the buyer, right? Because really your agent is not party to the contract. It's your transaction person, but it's not really party to the contract because it's neither signing or executing the contract. So you have the name of the seller, the name of the buyer. You normally get the address of the property, right? There's a legal description. And I'm going to tell you my humble advice always. Do not sign a contract 
in which it only has an address and no legal description. I have had one case and I have heard of others that the address may not be exactly correct, but what is always correct and what it tells you exactly what you're buying is that legal description because the legal description of the property is what is recorded in the county. So let's say that you're buying a lot of land, you may have an address, but that may not be the entire address of your lot. The lot has perimeters and that lot is registered with the county. So make sure that when you put the address, you have a legal description of your address because that, if there's any problems, you know exactly what is the real property that you are purchasing, right? In case anything with the address may not be exact. In the contract, we always have things that have to do with uh, what about if there's any personal items that are included? What are the personal items that may not be included? All of that is on the front page of your contract and you should know that and that should be negotiated or advised before you even sign this contract. The next uh, the next paragraph that you find in the contract, of course, is the price. What are you offering for the property? Uh, it always tells you in what time period are you going to make that deposit? I am going to tell you folks to really, really, really pay attention to the date in which your deposit gets entered. If you say in a contract that your deposit would be a title company in four days, it best be there in four days. Know and be aware that when your deposit is not on time, technically it's a breach of contract. It doesn't mean that your contract is dead because we always want to negotiate, but it could be if somebody else has another offer that is bigger than yours. So again, I want to remind you what is happening in the contract. It's very important that dates are made. If your deposit is supposed to be in title company in four days, it should be, it must be there in four days, okay? I'm going to quickly move to the important parts of it. There's a time for commitment where somebody signs and accepts your offer. You have a closing date. It's very important that you hit all that mark. Now, another day that is super important in the contract is your financial commitment. It's extremely, extremely important that your financial commitment is done by the time that you have in the contract. Why? Because after that, you are not subject to that loan and you must purchase or you must purchase because you've already taken all of your time. Therefore, you either buy because now you don't have that out. If you don't qualify for a loan, something happened, God forbid you lose your job, something happens, your situation changes. If you are within the date, you can simply say, your lender will say, well, this person no longer qualifies to purchase this property. We need to get out and your deposit is going to be protected. If you let those days pass by and they did not know that something with you changed and there was no notice, they're assuming you're ready to purchase and your deposit is in play. So then you may have to be forced and if you have to get out, you are going to lose that deposit. You can lose that deposit. So again, um, I don't have all the time in the world to tell you everything that I would like to reiterate, but if there's one thing you take from today's segment on contract, dates are imperative to hit those markets are those marks are imperative same for the seller same way that you as a buyer have this commitment so does the seller to provide whatever the contract says i want you guys to continue to bring me your questions in reference to contracts or anything else that you want to talk and what something else important that somebody did ask me for the contract or oh, even though it's an assist the inspections yes of course you can do inspections as an assist it's just that they're not obligated to fix them. Oh, what happens if the property does not appraise? You sit down and negotiate. Either you get out of the contract or the seller simply says, I don't want to sell for that price. But remember, there's ways and everything could be sold, but you must hit your marks and you must maintain yourself within the date that your contract says. I want to thank you. Continue to bring me your questions, continue to bring me your doubts, anything that you need. Remember, this is Puertas Abiertas, your show, your home for anything real estate related. Uh, the phone number again is 407-476-9059. My email is puertasabiertasshow at gmail.com. My name is Mari Carmen Rodriguez. As always, it is a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. And I look forward to more questions. 
just in a little bit, I'm going to go into a commercial break. So we're going to be right back with more information, tips and stories here in Puertas Abiertas on GKI Radio. See you back. Okay, mommy. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Uh, we continue with today's show. And lucky for us, we have a listener that just called in and uh, she wants to give us her story so all of us can take something from it. Uh, before we go into the listener, I want to remind you guys again what is the number that you need to call? It's 407 476 9059. Make sure that you say that you're calling Puertas Abiertas which is our show, and this is for Mari Carmen Rodriguez so that I can get all that information. I can get your information, your questions, or to open you up to a story like we have right now. Hey, Laura. I have Laura Hello. Rogers on the phone from Augusta, Georgia. Thank you so Hi, much for you? joining us. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you. No, nice to have us. That one from the Peach State. Mm. Since we're all fruits, right? Isn't that from yeah. the Greek wedding? We're all peaches. Yeah, we're all peaches. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Laura. And I appreciate you calling in. And tell me, how was your experience when you bought your property? Well, um, it wasn't a, a bad of an experience. Uh, it took six months between looking for a house and uh, finding the right one uh, right. to purchase. Uh, yeah, we, we had to go through many, uh, you know, many places, open houses, uh, that's the best way to actually try to find out the best deal. Correct. Uh, plan to look for a right place, uh, and, uh, maybe that the offer didn't go true. Um, one of them actually did, uh, we, we really like one house to put it, uh, a bit in for, but, uh, by the next week, it was taken over because someone offered more money than us. Wow. But, um, yes. Uh, but finally, uh, after six months, we found one and um, we um, asked me to put this in. And um, it took a while for, uh, it took like about a couple of weeks for the owner to respond and say yes. And, um, and that he accepted our uh, offer. Right. Um, and after it did, you know, throughout the process of the closing, um, we, we saw that there was, um, the siding of the house made us some repairs and we wanted, um, the owner to fix it, but he ended up being that, uh, he didn't want to fix it. And, uh, it, it took our lawyer to talk to him and try to get it to, uh, you know, to fix the problem that we wanted right. to fix. Can I ask yes. you what what loan were you using for the purchase? Are well, you... we we were using uh, like a it was um it wasn't my first house, but at the same time I was buying it with my husband, so we couldn't buy up a do a first uh, time. So you, you um, went in an NFHA, you were in a conventional loan. Uh yes, okay. yes. Uh, so we we actually did the conventional loan and, and um. The, the good thing is that we put, um, uh, you know, like, uh, money down, which uh, was more than they offer, uh, more than what they needed for us to put down. Yeah, more than they required originally when they listed uh, probably in the MLS or how they listed the property. You came in over whatever they were requesting for down. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So and, what, and what was the reason that the owner didn't want to fix being that it looks like you were a great buyer coming in with a large deposit, which made, which made you a very secure buyer, right? Because the less that you need from the bank, the, you know, the better it is for the lender because you are not as, as um, 
Let me see what is the right word to use. You're not so much of a liability, right? A liability or a risk to the lender yeah. when you're coming in with such a big deposit. What was the um, the owner's, um, why he didn't want to help? Did you use I, an assist contract or did you use a regular FAR 9 contract? Do you I, know what I kind of contract? Yeah, I, I don't I don't remember which one. Okay. Yeah, but um, I, I think it was more of a uh, you know uh, pride or something that he didn't want to do it because he was asked to do it. Uh, but then what, once we um, you know the lawyer talked to him and he said he didn't want to do it, he did it. You know, with some problems, which okay. we found weird at the same time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And aside of that hiccup, you guys closed on time after the repairs. Uh, you went yeah. back and did inspections after the repair? Yes, we did. And okay. everything was, uh, well, the, the inspections were good. Um, everything was uh, up to date and up to point. And uh, we closed on time. Uh, and we went, you know, we, we closed like around mm, May and by probably May 25th, we were in our house and finally, so actually, um, you know, we moved in in spring. Well, that sounds great. I mean, because if you if you still even with a little hiccup close on time, believe me, that is a great contract. How did you find the experience with your agent? Did you find that it was a great experience? It, it was. It okay. was uh, a good experience. And, and probably because it was a friend of us uh, that actually helped us uh, with uh, the house. Uh, but I know that it would have been another agent that was not, you know, uh, familiar to us. It would have been a different. But that helped, knowing the person. Knowing the person, trusting the person, and that from what little you've said, that person was very knowledgeable in order to know what to do the moment that a problem arises, which is something that I, I have been saying here from the first day that we started the show, that um, I want to say that there's a lot of great agents out there. I, I don't care what the majority of the public, I think sometimes you hear always the loudest or the negative because it's what we talk about, right? When things go wrong and we don't talk as much as when things go right. But I think in general, there's a lot of great agents out there. You just need to do your due diligence because different agents have experiences in different aspects. And as long as you get an agent that has experience or that has a team to support and to follow that contract and to be on top of you, the client, knowing you, knowing what you, you know, what you're qualified for and attending to that contract, which, you know, a lot of folks don't pay attention to the contract. They think, oh, I, you know, I did a contract and if something doesn't happen, and look, your contract came back to save you. The yeah. only reason why that owner had to do what he did with you is because your contract had language that stated that to the effect. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is great when you have someone that knows how to write the right contract, that knows how to follow up a contract. That is important, folks. You must request that from your realtor and your lender has to be in communications with you and have a good team of people that are following that transaction. Everybody thinks that this is easy, but this is not easy. I always say real estate is beautiful until it gets ugly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. You know, having uh, the, the right people to, uh, to have your back, that's the best thing. Uh, it allows you to have a like, great experience, you know, not in buying a house. Otherwise, you can have there. It is a nightmare. It is true. It is true. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to hear from you, to get to know you. I hope you continue to tune in, to listen. And hey, anything else that you want to share with us in the future, or if you're ready to buy something else and you want to ask questions, um, be free to call us. We're always here. That's exactly what we want to do. Your story is going to tell someone else out there do your due diligence and you're going to hear this word a lot in this show do your due diligence know who you're working with know, know their experience know where they're coming from how long they've been doing this what company they're working with uh, do they have a team that can support and that really gets to know you well so that person can serve you to the best of their ability um again thank you so much thank you so much laura rogers from augusta georgia Thank you for joining us. 
Uh, God bless you. Hope this is not your first purchase. You buy a lot more. Get Thank your you. get your security in real estate. So for retirement. And for everyone who's listening to us, hey, come on and join us. As you can see, this is your house. Uh, tell us your story. Tell us your experiences. This is what we want to hear and know. I'm going to go into a short commercial break. But remember, drop a comment or a question if you would like to hear them answered on this show. The number is 407-476-9059. Remember to say my name, Mari Carmen Rodriguez, followed by your name and your question or comment. And uh, we're going to be right back. I have a lot more for you here in Puertas Abiertas on GKI Radio. Come back, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us back. Oh my God, the program today is packed, totally back. But as I promised uh, previously in, um, in our show of last week, I promised you Martha Arians, which happens to be a friend. She also does real estate, but she's a public accountant and happens to be also my accountant and the accountant of many clients that I have. And I wanted to make sure that the public understands the difficulty of buying or going to get a loan if you have not prepared yourself in order to get that loan that you're going to need for to purchase a property. So who better than to ask than Martha? Thank you for joining us, girl. You look so cute. Thank you. I love the Thank hair. You. Love the hair. Um, this is home. We're just talking, trying to give information and tools. Like we talk every day normally. Yeah. Um, when folks call us and they are in need or they have a problem or they want to buy, but they didn't do their taxes properly and now they don't qualify for anything. So the idea that I wanted you to come is to tell people what do you need to have in your taxes in order to be able to purchase a property, how you should do them, um, how many years of taxes do you need in order to purchase a property, what is the minimum that you should make in order to qualify for a loan? Okay. So you're the expert. Help us, please. Thank you, Mari Carmen, for inviting me and giving me this opportunity for you guys to help you with all these um, dreams that we all have. That's right. To have our beautiful, beautiful home and be kind of uh, security on, on that aspect. Now, um, basically, what we need is two years. Two years of the income, the uh, income, permanent income. Um, 24 months on the same uh, rubber or in the same, uh, the same company, company. The same, okay. exactly. And um, have in mind that uh, the banks are no longer lending you less than seventy thousand dollars. That's right. Uh, so seven seventy hundred thousand dollars. So in order for you to achieve that, you have to present the taxes annually for no less than uh, 70,000 or, or more. Now, um, what is it exactly? Because sometimes folks are confused. Let's say I want to buy a property that is $300,000 because I think, I think sometimes what happens, we know the numbers so well, but the listeners are not understanding how the numbers work. Oh, okay. You said, okay, a bank will not lend you less than 70000 That is true. And we all know why a bank doesn't lend you less than 70000 It's because they don't make any money. Like I always told you, this show is going to be about truth and reality. The money, the banks make no money, according to them, if they lend you less than $70,000. But listen, this is South Florida. We don't even have a, a toilet <laughs> or a bedroom for $70,000. So the... I would say the average property here for folks are what between three hundred and five hundred thousand dollars. So, what does someone need to earn in order to qualify, let's say, for a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan? Because that's mostly the medium or the average. 
Okay, for 300 would be more than $100,000 on uh, a year. You have to present, uh, like for every 100 is 30,000. So that's- Okay, be, okay, I get you. Yes. So for every $100,000 financeable, you need to earn $30,000. Exactly. So that's, okay, great. Okay, exactly. Okay. And uh, in order to achieve that, you you need to um, be aware that you can do it jointly. I mean, it's, uh, if you present taxes with your husband and with your husband, or if you present taxes as a hill household, it's important for you to know that uh, that amount of money have to be there without expenses. But sometimes we try to avoid um, pay taxes and we put all the expenses we have. So if you, for example, you get that money, but you get that money and pay 99s, and pay 99s accept you to, um, or allow you to present some of the expenses, and you um, low that amount until you make it annually, presenting the, the, all the expenses be, or that you cannot um, buy the property because even if you have the amount of money, if you load the, the um, expense income, yeah, showing your, your expenses, so you, you will be able to, to buy the house. So in other words, what you're saying is that, okay, you make $100,000 a year, but then because you're a 1099, what you're doing is you're putting so many expenses so you don't pay taxes on that, but at the same token, yes, you're not paying taxes, and now you don't qualify for the loan because you earn so little that you're going to qualify only, let's say, for a loan of $150,000, which we all know in South Florida, I don't know what is going to get you. In all of Florida, I don't even know what is going to get you. So be aware of that. That is a good point that Martha is bringing up because if you know that you want to buy in the next year or two, then unfortunately you have to report everything that you make or as much as you make and the other thing that I was going to ask you too, that sometimes lenders come and tell me, oh, but this person said that they have money, but they never put it in the bank. Explain to us what happens when you don't put cash or you have a gift, but you don't put it in the bank. If you plan to buy a house, it's better that you show the money that you have. Money that they don't see is money that they, you, you don't have. So the bank is working with you. It's logically, physically, logically. If you show you, the, uh, you have a hundred thousand, you're more available to be for a lender considered seriously. But if you, you don't show the money that you made because you might be put uh, the cash under the table, so they never gonna know that you, you know, you have the um, your potential um, buyer. So they. Right. Remember, folks, that a bank is in the business of making business and money. If you cannot show that for the last two years, at least, you have been making this steady income, how are they lending you? What are they trusting? So you have to show what you make for real, at least in those two years. After you have your house, then you have more shelter. You have more things that you can put in, more things to, to deduct. But until you get that house and until you buy that, and also let's say sometimes folks get married and you get a gift from family, you get something, please deposit it because the bank is going to tell you, I don't know where you got those $5,000 gift. We don't know if that's a loan. We don't know if now you have to pay that back. We don't know if that's even uh, laundering money, right? They don't know what's going on. So, but what else do they need to also do aside of, okay, making sure that they are showing all of their earnings and they're showing all of that. What other good advice would you give someone that is getting ready? Because you said something before when we were in break about credit cards and folks sometimes oh, don't understand right. yes. this. Now, if you are uh, planning to buy a house, seriously, act as what you think. What does that mean? If you have big credit cards, please pay the most you can, pay uh, uh, the car if you can pay it in once if you because you need a capacity of um of income income so if it, no, capacity of, of being available to get all the loan right but if you don't have a uh um all these uh, yeah if you have all these expenses if you have two cars that you have to pay for if you have hundred thousand dollars in credit cards how is the bank going to lend you when you owe so many things that then you're going to be defaulting on the, on the mortgage because 
you don't have the money available to pay for the mortgage, etc. So thank you, yeah, because people don't understand that your credit cards do do affect the amount of money available to you. Just like you know, cars when you have big loans on cars, they do affect the available money for the loan. Exactly. And now also, uh, don't get involved in any loan if you are uh, planning to buy a house. Don't get in, involved in other um, card or another uh, credit, credit card. card. And you have to be, you know, the most quiet possible. possible. So uh, yeah, it, it, it also lowers your credit scores when exactly. you get some of this stuff out. Exactly. Okay, yeah. And your credit score, we've already known because we already did a segment and a show on this. Your credit score is very important in order for you to qualify for a loan yes. and to qualify for good interest. But this is why it's so important that people should first speak to their accountant, the person who does their taxes, before they go to that lender and see what is their buying power. Because you're going to prepare them to the optimum and best buying power. And you're, you know, you're not going to be choking but you're going to be able to acquire what you need i'm so glad you came thank you so much thank for you me. i hope you come more often and we can explain to folks uh i know we i know we have a commercial break coming up i so thank you guys again for coming uh thank you for being with us i'll be right back with more information tips and stories this is puertas abiertas your home your show i am Mari Carmen rodriguez and we are on gki radio Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Um, I, we have a lot of things stored for you, and we're in the, our segment, the people's questions, and here we are trying to answer all of your questions that have come in right now. I want to remind our audience that you can make your questions uh, calling 407-476-9059. Otherwise, you can send your emails at puertasabiertas show at gmail.com so bring in by email uh give us a call any way you want to we can uh we can take your calls and questions and that'll be great remember that you're going to find us here every single week at gki radio say my name mari carmen rodriguez and they'll know that the questions comes to us and we can process them by the time we see you again the following week okay Hey, Janet. Hi, how, how are, are you, girl? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> so okay. glad to be back. I know. Thank you. Thank you for coming back. Were you like, uh, did you get some good questions for yes. this week? Yes, okay. I did. I actually did. So the first question that I have from Max, this is the million dollar question. Okay. okay. Will the market crash? Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time that question gets asked, you and I would be rich. <laughs> Listen, folks. Um, I know everybody understands that this is a crazy market. We're so low inventory. The prices are very, very high. But we need to remember a couple of things. It's called supply and demand. The prices are going to be strong as long as you have 20 people fighting for the same home. It is what it is. It's like every cycle of real estate. Sometimes you have a seller's market. Sometimes you have a buyer's market. We're right now in a super seller, but very tight market. And we have so many folks who are finding South Florida the most amazing place to live, which it is. It is. It is. I hate to say it, it is. And of course, let's talk honesty. I told you guys that this is a show about honesty. And I don't care what anybody else thinks. When a million dollar gets you in New York, it's not what a million dollar can get you in South Florida. Definitely not. So let's call it what it is. So yes, we have folks with a lot of money, folks from other places that are coming here and they are putting extremely strong offers and it's hard to beat that cash and beat the people, but we're Floridians, we're resilient, we're gonna make it. I don't necessarily think the market is gonna crash because the banks have been very conservative. They're giving you the appraisal and if you wanna pay over appraisal, that is your choice. That is your choice, nobody can tell you not to. 
But the banks are not lending at the asking price. Please don't forget that. What I think we may get to is like a, you know, stabilizing where, you know, maybe we get more properties in the market that the banks are going to put out or developers are going to develop faster or simply, simply a settlement in the market because that's it. All the folks that were trying to buy and come down, they've already done it. Everything is picked out. And again, the banks have been doing the right thing. They lend according to their appraisal. It's up to the buyer and the seller, the buyer to pay more or the seller to negotiate for whatever they were asking, whether it was truly worth it or not. Okay, let's not forget that. Um, that is my personal opinion. That is my little five cents up in the air. Uh, if you need to buy, you buy. What can you do? You have to live somewhere. You may have to move more to the outskirts. You may have to second, you may have to commute a little bit longer than your desired place. If you don't have to buy right now, I hope the seller's agents don't kill me. If you don't have to buy right now, do not buy right now. Having said that, folks, rents are really high. Yeah. So you must make those numbers. Mm -hmm. Is it more expensive to get a loan at this price or is it more expensive to continue to rent at this super high, crazy rental you know, prices that we have? Right, Victoria? Yeah. <laughs> and no, at this moment, they're also raising the rents for these renters. It's... You heard, oh, the, you, I, I don't know, you were in that meeting that we had uh, just a few days ago. The rents went up 10% nationwide, mm -hmm. but... In Miami, the rents went up 48.9%. You do your numbers, 48.9%. And folks are paying it. I don't know how, but folks are paying it. But we have other folks from outside of the country. Many things are going on. Work is here. So I do understand, but yes, the rents are crazy. And I can say that. I'm in real estate every day. I'm a listing agent and a buyer's agent. Rents are crazy. So that's why I say, yes, the market may be high for buying, folks. But make your numbers. Is it worth it for you to keep on renting at these crazy prices? Or maybe a little bit more around the outskirts but you become a, an owner, right? And you exactly. pay for your own roof, right? That's right. What other questions do we okay, have? Okay, so here we go next with Jose. Thank you, Jose, for sharing this question. I am thinking of selling my house. How do I price my home? Oh, my God, Jose. Imagine. It is your market. It's a seller's market. You price the home first. What we always do in real estate is look to see what the last sales are. When we do our, uh, what we call, you know, our, our CMAs, our comparable market analysis, then we also see how many homes are for sale in your area to see what, if we can put a little bit higher. And then you see demand, you see the curve. At this price, my friend, you're going to sell at the peak of the market. So if you are a seller, and you're thinking of selling and you are in south florida for that matter i think most any place in florida as i am hearing from other agents all over the uh the state it is a great time to sell it is a great time to sell because most probably it's going most probably it's going to go over the value that has been closing because again remember the banks are steadily lending according to appraisal Homes are closing a little bit higher, but it's going to go over a little bit over you what, what we would feel the appraised value would be. So prepare your house nicely. Make sure you understand what folks like in your area so you can get the optimum. Um, I always say take out a lot of personal stuff out of your house. Because, take clutter, yeah, definitely. Take clutter because people want to see themselves in it. And if you are one of the few that are for selling right now in your neighborhood, Get ready for the tours. Get ready to have 10, 20 people outside your door touring. And then sit down with uh, your agent and look at those contracts and read them. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people think that it's just who gives the most money. No. Terms and conditions are also very important. Very important. As a seller, you want to have an agent that is experienced right. that can explain to you how sometimes a little bit less money with better terms and conditions might be the best for a seller. Yes, of course, definitely. <clears throat> so here we have Rosie. She came with a question. What are the steps to selling my home? Okay, same thing. If you're preparing to sell, remember, 
Look at your home through the eyes of the people who are wanting to buy. Right. Look to see what folks like in your area. If I was you and I was trying to sell, I want to check out what's selling around me or what has sold around me. It's so easy nowadays. Have your listing agent uh, show you the comparables and you want to see the picture, not just the price. Have your listing agent show you the picture of the homes that have sold around you so you can have an idea what got the most, what got the least, what are folks liking, colors. Maybe you have updated colors in your house, painted, it refreshes. Right. It's almost like we women with makeup, right? Makeup and hair. Yeah. Hey, those gray hairs don't look great in everybody, guys. <laughs> so the house is the same thing. You want to make it fresh and clean and inviting for anybody. Uh, declutter, like you said, declutter. declutter. Yes, definitely. Take out personal pictures, a lot of personal pictures to me, and make the space inviting, available. And like I said, it's a great market if you you know, if you want to sell, this is a great market to sell. A lot of folks are looking for homes. Yes. Do we have time for one more or? Yes. We may have time okay. for one more. Okay. So let's do Jen. Jen, how long is the process when purchasing a home? Oh my God, Jen, it depends on your, on the seller. If he needs to stay there after the fact that he closes with you. But normally, normally a home is closed within 30 working days that's normally the mortgage between 30 and 45 days closing so that's what we stipulate sometimes even faster if lenders are moving faster but that's what it is i think today we're running out of time but i so want to thank you guys for joining us please 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 keep on bringing bring those questions yes. bring, bring those bring ideas them. right they've been great. great you're hired great <laughs> hired people on the phone yes <laughs> so this is your program this is your home this is puertas abiertas here at GKI Radio. You know how to reach me, go 407-476-9059. Uh, Janet will be answering that phone. Yes, I'll be answering the phone calls. There so, you are. I'll be here to answer any questions you want. And let me tell you, if I am not sure of something, I will bring the best access for you because the whole point here is to give you the tools to help you and for me to bring you the wisdom that we need just to navigate this crazy real estate market. Hope to see you again next Thank week. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. We love you. Stay tuned.